This video is for entertainment and educational purposes only. Hey guys, Big Paul here. Today we are going to talk about calculating your macros for a bodybuilding diet. Now I want to put this disclaimer out there. This is not a diet for living 120 years old. This is not a diet for being a runner. This is not a diet for CrossFit or whatever. People treat their diets like a religion. You know, I get people all the time that get butt hurt that, you know, this diet is the best way to go. That diet's the best way to go. I view diet as a tool in your toolbox. And there are different tools that you use to accomplish different jobs. The job that we are trying to accomplish here with the macros that I am talking about today are to build a physique for bodybuilding, for uh, men's physique, for classic physique, or if you just want to get bigger and look better. Um, I, I know a lot of people get married to their diet and get upset when I say something that runs counter to their diet. By all means, do whatever diet makes you happy. I don't care. This is for physique enhancement. All right, guys, we're going to dig into all this in just one second. All right, so for physique enhancement diets, um, Protein is the foundation of our diet. That is the macro that's pretty much locked in place based on uh, size of the athlete that I'm working with, okay? Um, and there have been a bunch of studies done on this, on protein requirements, and almost every one of those studies, well, every one of them is done on people that are not enhanced Trainers, I've seen some some recent ones that show that 0.7 grams per pound of body weight is adequate enough protein for the non-enhanced trainer. Well, most of us that are in this game are enhanced, so this does not apply to our co cohort, does it, when you think about it? So, I take studies with a grain of salt that don't apply to our cohort. If it's done on a rat, or if it's done on 60-year-old women... That does not imply to a 250-pound bodybuilder taking a bunch of testosterone. So uh, we have, you know, we can extract some ideas from that, but it's not the be-all and also keep that in mind when you're looking at studies. It's it's relative to the group that it was done on to the cohort. So with us, let's assume that 0 0.7 is the baseline for for. Uh, natural uh, athletes that are probably not training that hard, uh, <laughs> which is not us. Uh, so with that said, think about what the primary thing that uh, anabolics do to increase size, and that is increased muscle protein synthesis, which means we probably need more protein than the average person does who's not on gear. It's not a lot. It doesn't take that much protein to... <laughs> to generate a pound of muscle. But when you actually extrapolate it and do the math on it, I, I've talked about it in other videos, it's, it's really a very minuscule amount of protein. But what we want to do is have high quality protein throughout the day so we have constant uh, high levels of uh, amino acids in our blood to fuel growth because we have no idea when growth is going to happen. And we want high quality amino acids with the complete, or proteins with complete amino acid chains um, and we probably want more than what the average person does just to cover our bases. Now you don't need a ridiculous amount of protein. So somewhere around the gram to a gram and a quarter, uh, per pound of body weight is usually where I run and I found adequate enough to put on size. I have been able to grow to roughly 280 using, using these macros. So typically the way I calculate my protein requirements for my clients and for myself is somewhere around a gram of protein per pound of body weight on high carb days, maybe even a little less. Uh, when you're eating a shit ton of, of carbs, uh, carbs are protein sparing, so you don't need as much. And also if we're going to push carbs really high, 
protein, especially animal protein, is very filling. So we might want to dial the protein back just a little bit so we can get all that food down. Uh, on the medium and low days where carbs are lower, we will push the protein up a tad. So we'll go up to something like um, a gram and a quarter per pound of body weight. When I'm dieting, I may even push that up even further, mainly for satiety, you know, to keep myself feeling full. Um, so, you know, another consideration that we need to think about is essential amino acids. And I know I'm going to upset the vegans and vegetarians out there. It is really difficult, and I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's really difficult to get in all the amino acids that you need um, eating a vegan or vegetarian diet. You have to be very creative. You have to be very mindful. I would say it's suboptimal, but it can be done. Uh, but the problem that you run into when you're eating vegan and vegetarian diets with protein, if you want to maximize physique, is that a lot of the <laughs> proteins that have complete amino acid chains are a lot higher calorie and also contain carbohydrates. Um, you know, like I hear like rice and beans would be an example of something that's a complete, it would have complete amino acid chains. Uh, and <laughs> you, you have to eat a lot more to make that happen. Now you can substitute with powders. That's another way to do it. Um, you know, but just we're talking about optimizing. I don't particularly have anything against you doing that style of diet, but we're talking about optimizing for physique. So if you want to enhance your physique at the most optimal way possible, animal proteins are the way to do it, whether you like that or not. Um, it, it, it just is the most efficient path from point A to point B. Now, with that said, it can be done, but it takes a lot of work to do it the other way. Um, Proteins are uh, typically used for cellular repair and construction. And um, like I said, this can be used as a tool for satiation, keeping you full. Carbs. Carbs are sort of the wild card in the diet, um, in a physique enhancement diet. Um, <laughs> carbs are four calories per gram, just like protein. But there is no such thing as essential carbs. So um, now with that said... Lifting and physique enhancement requires glucose for fuel. And a big, full, round bodybuilder um, needs glucose to have, a, have that look, to achieve that look. I hear guys talk about doing keto for bodybuilding and, you know, uh, carnivore, other low-carb style diets. I, I, I hate to break the news to you, but it's just not the most optimal way to build uh, um you know, if you want to look like Big Rami, for example. Now, that's not to say that you can't progress, you can't um, achieve uh, your, you know, certain level of goals with, with those style of diets, but it's not optimal. Once again, we are talk, talking about optimizing your nutrition for bodybuilding and physique enhancement. Um, but with that said, there is no minimum requirement for carbs. There are no essential carbs like there are essential amino acids or essential fatty acids. So carbs are a wild card. They are optional. They're a fuel. They are a way to leverage um, nutrition to fill the muscle up, to make you look big, to give you that, that big, round, three-dimensional look. Um, you'll, you'll notice that a lot of guys that uh, run low-carbohydrate diets look very flat, typically. And that's because their glycogen stores are depleted. So the way I calculate carbohydrates in my diets, uh, anything below 100 grams, you might as well just go to zero. Uh, you feel like shit. And unless you're a small female athlete, then you know that might be a little bit different. But for larger male athletes, I've just found you know once we hit that 100 grams of carbs, you might as well just go down to zero. Um, low days, typically... Um, in the off season, somewhere around one gram per pound of body weight um, of carbohydrates is what I typically use. Um, on dieting phases, we go down sometimes as low as zero carbs on low days. Uh, medium days uh, in the off season when we're trying to put on size, typically somewhere around one and a half grams per pound of body weight of carbs. Um, those on diets can go down to just pre and post workout carbs and maybe a little bit of intra or just pre and post workout carbs, period. Uh, you know, we can go all the way down to that hundred gram mark. 
Um, and high days, it's somewhere between three to four grams per pound of body weight. And a lot of times on high days, the high days actually get even higher when you're dieting because you get flat. It's an opportunity to refill glycogen stores and to keep you from looking uh, like shit <laughs> when you're dieting. You see a lot of guys that diet, that get super, super flat. Um, all right, moving on. Fats. So... This is one that gets all the natives stirred up. I'm sure. I'm sure this video is going to make some people chafe, chafe some butts. Uh, but <laughs> fats um, are nine calories per gram. Um, we do need a certain amount of fats for metabolic processes like like uh, vitamin absorption, hormone production, etc. And I always laugh when guys come to me saying that they need to eat a shit ton of fat uh, because they need to, you know, increase hormone production, but they're taking exogenous hormones. Dude, you're fucking taking, <laughs> you're getting your hormones from a 22 gauge needle. Uh, how, mu how much fat do you need <laughs> to make hormones? And really, when you look at the science on it, it's only a few grams per day that are actually required to make it. We do need essential fatty acids. Um, those are fats that your body cannot manufacture on their own. So, but it's a fairly low amount of those. And I typically add those in as added fats. On high days, we keep the fats as close to zero as possible because we're deploying insulin with the high carbohydrates. Um, and, and what happens in my experience when you add fats to a to insulin in a high carbohydrate state, you just end up getting fatter. So when I hear people talk about insulin just made them fat, probably the reason insulin made them fat is because they're eating too many fats. And when you think about it logically, you take a step back. What you know, especially saturated fats, really serve no purpose other than just energy um, for the most part. Um, and when when you think about it. Your body prefers glucose as a fuel source, and if you're you're having a thousand grams of carbs and then you add a bunch of fat in on top of that, what do you think is going to happen to the excess fat that you eat? If your body's prioritizing carbs as fuel source, they're going to get stored as fat. So I have seen it have a negative impact on body composition. Uh, med medium days we do uh, somewhere around. 0.15 of EFAs added. Now, keep in mind, we're getting some fats from the meats we eat. I usually have the protein sources as low in fat as we possibly can have them, but there's still some fat in those protein sources. Um, low days, fats are a little bit more because we're eating less carbs, somewhere around 0.3 grams. We definitely want to limit saturated fats. This is one that I've had a lot of arguments with, with bros with on on social media, I get these guys reaching out to me, telling me that saturated fats aren't the enemy and blah, 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 blah. And every one of them that reaches out to tell me this is fat. <laughs> so I just laughed at myself. I, all right. So I got some dude reaching out telling me, tell me that uh, you can eat as much fat, saturated fat as you want, but yet they're fat asses. So, <laughs> so here's the thing with saturated fats. It's like I said before, if you're eating a low carbohydrate diet, sure, you can get away with eating more saturated fats because your body is going to start burning those saturated fats as a fuel source. Um, um, but when you're in a high carb state, any excess saturated fat you take in is just going to get stored as fat and drive your lipids through the roof. And, and I've seen it over and over and over again. It has a negative effect on body composition. I've seen it Countless times I've seen in blood work where people, if they're eating a, a high a diet high in saturated fat, that their their lipids go up through the roof. You can talk to any one of my clients that I've worked with over a period of time that run gear and keep their saturated fats low, that their blood their blood panels improve, even while on gear. You know, and I've seen in my own blood work. I got a little sloppy with my diet on my cruise, and guess what? my cholesterol went through the roof. So, I mean, and, you know, granted that they're, the science on, on, on whether or not saturated fats and cholesterol cause heart attacks is, is a little muddy, but it, there is certainly a correlation. People that have higher incidences of cardiovascular events typically have higher cholesterol. 
So there is a correlation. Correlation isn't always causation. We, we understand that. But there certainly does seem to be a correlation between the two. So why take the chance? They're unnecessary. You don't have to have saturated fats in your diet to survive. And not to mention, the average American is fat as fuck anyway. So, you know, these guys that I see overly concerned about taking in saturated fats, they have giant bellies. You have plenty of saturated fats in your belly in reserve if you need saturated fats. Now, we do need some EFAs for metabolic processes. Um, you know, so, so uh, fats are in, used in the body for cellular repair, vitamin absorption, metabolic function, and energy. Uh, but the, 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 the essential, amount of essential fatty acids that we need is really very low. And most people, especially Americans, overeat saturated fats, don't eat enough essential fatty acids. It's just the facts. All right, so manipulating these macros up and down. The wild card, as I mentioned, is, is, um, is uh, carbohydrates. So when we're trying to add weight, we push carbohydrates up. When we're trying to lose weight, we pull the carbohydrates down. It really is that simple. Protein stays static. Uh, at the end of the day, Losing weight and gaining weight is ultimately about net energy balance. It's another one that people get butt hurt on is, is, the, is thermodynamics the, and that the thermodynamics applies to the human body. I, I get some people that say that it doesn't, but if you can disprove thermodynamics, you'll, you'll win a Nobel Prize in science so, so it, it's, and create limitless energy. Um, and, and I think where people get confused is how energy is partitioned, how, um, how our body uses that energy, how it stores it, um, how our hormones affect our, our, our base metabolic rate and things like that, energy output, et cetera, um, that affect net energy balance. I think that people don't consider that in the equation when they're talking about um, thermodynamics. So... You know, if your metabolism goes up because you're running some fat burners um, or you're, you know, you're using exogenous hormones that might raise your metabolism a bit, that does not violate thermodynamics. It just means your, ener <laughs> your energy requirements have increased. So that does not um, disprove thermodynamics. It just your the equation has changed. The the variables in the equation have changed. Um so typically we adjust carbohydrates up and down to lose or gain uh, body fat. And that's because we force our body, if we pull the carbohydrates down, we're forcing our body to use stored energy, which is typically glycogen and body fat. That's why people get flat when they um, are dieting because your body's going to burn up that glycogen and burn up um, stored body fat. Now we can refill glycogen by having those high carbohydrate days. Uh, but there's only to a certain degree to which we can do that. Uh, uh, same thing when we're trying to gain weight, we'll push carbohydrates up to keep us nice and full and force the body into a growth state. I, I, I get these people all the time that think that you can grow muscle on a deficit. Um, it, it's almost fucking impossible to do so. Uh, I have seen some guys, uh, you know, we can talk about it later, but trend seems to show that there seems to be some evidence that with, with trend that you can grow muscle to a certain degree um, in a deficit, but it's not optimal. Um, fats can be adjusted up and down as a last resort. Um, I have run zero fat diets before, and let me tell you, you feel like shit when you run a zero fat diet. You feel fucking awful. Um, so you do need some EFAs in there for basic metabolic function and cellular repair, vitamin transport and all that stuff. And, uh, the running zero fats is sort of a last resort. Like you get towards the end of a contest prep or something, and you need to peel off some extra fat. You can do that. Um, but anyway, guys, that's all I got on this one. I'm sure I'm going to have a lot of people tell me I'm wrong on this one. <laughs> uh, this is just what I've seen works. You can believe it or not. I don't really care. Uh, but th this is what I have seen work for people, um, over and over and over again. You can talk to any of my clients that I've gotten in shape, um, and they can tell you that their blood markers have improved, that their body composition has improved by doing this type of stuff. All right, guys, if you have comments or questions, put them in the comment section below. Thanks for watching.
For coaching or consultations, head over to www.anabolicbodybuilding.com to book your spot today. I can help you with optimizing hormones, fat loss, muscle gain, physique, athletic performance, nutrition, and health. For more information, shoot me an email at bigp3rd at gmail.com.